Hey there, it's Kevin Henry, the Director of Marketing for Fortune Management. And whenever we think marketing, we thank our good friend, Fred Joel. Fred, how are you, man? Fantastic. Had a, had a terrific few days uh, with Fortune 50. So. Well, and, let, and let's talk about that, because one of the things that I heard about there, transformational perspectives and a talk that you gave there. What is that and what was your main message to those folks at Fortune 50? Well, I wanted to give them several things to think about. Fortune 50 is, is really the, the highest level you can get in fortune coaching. And so I always have to do the, a, a specific new lecture. Uh, and so I wanted to give them more than just marketing. I wanted to give them some things that I've seen that really transform how people perform in their business or increase the quality of life. So I, I had a, a a half a dozen of those things and I, and they were very interactive. Uh, and so th the first thing I, I rolled out was your impossibles are actually just opinions. Hmm. And, uh, so, which is, you know, everybody goes, well, what, what does he mean by that? And so what I did is I had all the dentists in the room stand up and I said, okay, Anyone who's done a single case, a single treatment on one patient, over $50,000 stay standing. And about, you know, a little more than a third of them sat down. And then I said, 60,000 stay standing. Everybody otherwise sit down, more sit down, 70, 80, 90. At 90, I still got five people standing. Now, there was about 75 people in the room. Okay. At, at three, at 100, I had three. So I said, all right, what was your number? One was 105,000. Another was 128,000. And one was 228,000 on wow. one patient. Now, obviously it's not all done in one day. My joke was, what is it? Was it Siamese twins that you did? How can it be that much? But I said, these people did more dentistry on one person in one case than the average American dentist does in two months. Or in her case, it was a female that did the two joining in four months. So you've set your own upper limit on what's possible for presenting a case. So I want you to see that it's you doing it. It's not the patient because the 128,000 case, I said, what did he say when you presented it? He said, let's get started. Hmm. Right? He didn't say, are you insane? <laughs> no, he, they, because the case was presented well and the need was there and the practice was where this person wanted to be. So you can set your upper limits uh, it, by changing what you believe is impossible because your impossible is being done by the guy standing next to you. Uh, so it was, it was great to see the reaction. And, and is, are some of those limits, as you said, they're up here, but does it start with, oh gosh, I shouldn't even present that to that person. I mean, is that where it starts or does it even go uh, earlier than that in, in the whole dentist patient relationship? I, the, the reflex for all people who do all sorts of sales is we try to decide what the customer, in this case, the patient can afford. And that's the mistake. And the great dentist I know never, never try to decide what that person can afford. They tell them what they should do. What's the ideal thing for them and what that's going to cost. I'll tell you even a great little story. The doctor who did $128,000 case, he and his, his treatment coordinator talked about the case before. And she said, uh, he said to her, well, what do you think this is worth, this case? And she said, 110. He said, okay, yeah. He says, that sounds right. Everything I'm looking at, that's, that's about right. She said, so let's present at 128,000. Hmm. That gives us room if the patient needs a discount or if it's, there's complications and stuff like that. He says, okay, that's what we'll do. And that was the patient that said, let's get started. Wow. Didn't they just accept. So he added, uh, you know, $18,000 of essentially profit 
or, and buffer money for complications uh, just by asking, just by not setting his own, or just saying, let's give ourselves a little room to pull it back. So and, uh, it's, yeah. it, oh, go ahead, please. It starts with that, with that, that thinking that's like, you are the one setting the limit. You, you have no idea when, when somebody goes, that's crazy. Okay. And so you find out, and, and I've seen more and more dentists do this. My own dentist years ago, I, I, he was telling me about presenting $110,000 case. He said, I almost laughed saying it. He said, but the person didn't, didn't come back. The person needed it. It was an older person, massive, massive implant case, obviously. Um, but he said the guy was, you know, retired. His kids were out of college. He he'd sold his boat, right? So still had money now. So this, this was an investment he was ready to make in himself. So uh, just, I, just I, I love it when that, and because you saw everybody in the room that had not hit that limit go, oh, so it's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm decided or my treatment coordinator or, and, you know, and a lot of them, it's like, that feels expensive to me. That's irrelevant information. What's the case worth? And, and I love in that story that the treatment coordinator and the dentist talked to each other and kind of helped each other set that price where they were both kind of comfortable with that. I think that's important as well as getting that verification that, yes, this is something we should be doing. And, and here's the price point. Yeah. Now, how great is that as a treatment coordinator who who really has the insight? It's like let's let's give ourselves a little room to back this off. Uh, I, you know, let's let's take a shot at it, right? Because she's she's obviously he's going to bonus her annually by how much she gets accepted. So she's not going to push stuff that doesn't get accepted ever. But she's she's learned that there's there's room there with people. So uh, just. To, a wonderful lesson and it and tying that to uh a, a dentist also has been asking me he said like look i'm trying to groom my associates to take on more of the cosmetic cases so i can work less i've got three practices going right now i'm trying to get down to a couple of days a week from four uh because i've got i want to be more of the ceo of the practice and that's a lot of what about f50s training them to be CEOs. It's not about, you know, the systems in your practice and stuff like that. It's about how to get them to think like a CEO. And so my recommendation to him was just charge a lot more than you used to. You're the most expensive person in the place. You can, and you can tell the patient, look, I'm going to review the whole case. My associate is going to do it. Well, why aren't you going to do it? Well, I'm 50% more than she is. And, and you said you want you were comfortable spending around $30,000 for your veneer. So I wanted to make sure you got it done at that price. Oh, no. Well, I want you. What are you? I'm $45,000 to do this case. I want you. That's fine. Okay. He's going to do it. He's going to be fine doing that. But he said his response was, look, I, lawyers do this all the time. You want the, the top attorney in the place? He's 750 bucks an hour. You want the middle weight? He's 500. You want the new associate? She's 300. He said, I could do the same thing in my practice. I can have three tiers of pricing for essentially the same case and, and, and cover them each way. If somebody goes, wow, I, that's really too much for me. Well, my associate can do it for 25,000. Oh, well, is she good? She's great. Nobody works for me is not great. I look at everything they do. So you don't get to be an associate in this practice unless you do fantastic work. So I'm more than comfortable letting them handle this case. An amazing way to free yourself up to work two days and make the same money you made in four. Oh, absolutely. That's the dream, right? I mean, seriously. Yeah. So I, I know there are some people who are watching this are going, man, that sounds great. I'm excited. And there are others who are going, I could never do that. How do we get those people who have that little self-doubt in their mind off the tee and say, you can do it and here's how? Well, it's controlling the dosage, right? Of the, the intensity of it. Don't try to leap from 50 to 100. Start to push, push yourself into a little discomfort zone, right? If, if, if like 40 is the most you've ever done, Pitch 50, present at 50, 
and the, this is the other key is that and this is in my book too is the fine art of shutting up shut up and wait to see what the patient says a lot of dentists come tripping in with like it's it, uh, that'll be forty nine thousand dollars for the case but if you can't afford that we could actually you know i could do i could only do part of it and then we could start and we could phase it out and i could do it at three thousand dollars it's like they back way off before they let the patient say let's go because this they sometimes they just say let's go you don't know until you sit there silently confidently because let's face it it's a great investment for them and somebody spend it if they need forty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars worth of dentistry that's one of the best investments they can make because it's going to affect the rest of their lives and they're in some condition that needs work it's going to affect their whole body and and every smile every meal everything going forward phenomenal investment that was one of the other transformational perspectives is you have to believe what's true. Your affirmation has to be what's true, which is that your dentistry is a phenomenal investment. And you need to remind yourself of that and you need to project that. That's so it starts, it starts with baby steps. Don't, don't, your brain will blow up if you try to double the case presentation. And you'll, and you'll project that the lack of confidence when you should be confident in your work and when somebody says yes, you go, well, I'm glad I didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm glad I waited to see what they said. Brent, I always love getting your perspective. I always enjoy the must read. Everything is marketing because everything is marketing and I always love to get your perspective on what's going on out there. So thank you so much for the time, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs>